Hey there guys, in today's video I am going to be building what is arguably the easiest foot toy and foraging toy that you have ever made for your bird. So if that's something you guys are interested in seeing, you want to make sure to stick around, because that's going to be coming up right after this. <music> Hey there guys, this is Jack over at High Red Bird where I am tirelessly working to find new ways to make the keeping of exotic animals and pets more exciting, more affordable, and ultimately more enjoyable. Uh, now for me, one of the most important things as I put together videos like this is to be honest with you guys. And if I am being honest, I am a lazy parrot owner. Okay, not really. I think we all know that if you have a bird at home, there's no way to really be lazy about it. You're going to spend a lot of time prepping special food items, prepping new toys, cleaning, 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 and um, oh yeah, cleaning. So there's a lot that you have to do. So I like to find ways to cut corners where it's possible, or rather to find ways to be a little bit more efficient. So in today's video, I wanted to show you guys how I build uh, what is arguably one of the easiest foot toys that you will ever build for your bird. It is a foraging toy as well, so not only is it something that they can uh, manipulate with their feet, it's something that they can shred, which birds really, really enjoy, but it's also going to encourage them to look for small pieces of food. Uh, so I definitely encourage you guys to try to make these toys. So without further ado, let's just learn how we're going to make this. All right, guys, so we are just going to jump right into this and build what is arguably the easiest toy you will ever make for your bird. You're just going to need a couple of items to put these toys together. You are going to need some finger traps. Uh, these usually come in a fairly large package. You can never find just one. Uh, so I actually bought a package of 12. You can get them in even bigger bulk. The good thing about that is that you can make a bunch of these ahead of time, store them in a plastic container, and just have them ready to go because all of the other items we're going to need come in bulk as well. Now you are going to need some craft sticks. Here I have both a tongue depressor and a popsicle stick size. Now either of those can work for this application and I'll show you how uh, when we put this together. You are also going to need some type of food item if you want to make this a foraging toy. Again, I really stress that I like doing a bunch of these all at one time, storing them in a plastic container and then having them ready to go. So for that instance, I want to make sure that I have a food item that has a little bit of a shelf life. Here I have an assortment of parrot-safe dried produce and nuts. It's actually a parrot mix. Uh, so it's made with, there's dried papaya, dried banana, there's little bits of almond, uh, and there's also a couple pieces of small dyed produce that realistically I've only ever seen in a holiday fruitcake. So I'd be interested to see if the birds are going to have any interest in that because my experience is that people have no interest in that. But that's what you need to put this toy together. Now, if you are going to make this toy on any given day and give it out to your bird that day, you have a little bit more option for your choices of food item that you're going to include in your toy. You could do things like chopped apple, uh, diced pieces of sweet potato, things that have a little bit more moisture to them. Now that's going to be what I'm going to avoid in this situation, but you need to assess what's going to work the best in your situation. Now the reason that I say that both the tongue depressor and the popsicle size sticks can work for this application is that not all finger traps are going to be made exactly the same size. Some of them are a little bit larger, some of them are a little bit smaller. So I'm going to tell you guys right now, being the eternal four-year-old that I am, I can't get a new package of finger traps and not try them out to see if they still work, um, which they do. I did get stuck in a finger trap, but the problem wasn't that I didn't know how it worked. The problem was that my fingers ended up being just a little too fat for these finger traps, so I just got stuck. So I want to believe that these finger traps are a little bit on the small side and not that my fingers are getting to be a little bit on the fat side. But that means that either of these can work for this instance. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of the popsicle sticks 
inside the finger trap and we are just going to slide it right inside. Now as you slide it in you'll notice the finger trap squeezes together. You can even help to force it a little bit more. Uh, that's going to be much the same as when you were a kid when you put your fingers in it. That's what causes it to loosen up so you can see inside there is now space for food items. Uh, so here I'm going to take a couple of pieces of dried papaya. Dried papaya is one of the favorites for my birds. Uh, now depending on when you are giving this to your bird, if it is their first time getting this, you might want the food items to be a little bit more visible. And you can put as many pieces in there as you want. So there we go, there's three. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to slowly work it back out over the popsicle stick. Now that means that those pieces of food are actually going to help lock the entire thing together. Uh, the nature of that biaxial braid of the finger trap means that everything will be locked in nice and tight so your bird can't just pull things out. They're going to have to shred this entire thing. And I love how intelligent that made me sound, but I'm going to be perfectly honest. I totally looked up what a biaxial braid was and what the configuration of a finger trap was called before I even started this video. It's okay not to know things as long as you know where to look them up and when you need to look them up if you want to sound a little bit smarter. So there you go. There was one with one popsicle stick. Uh, again here I can just do that with a piece of banana and that one piece of banana was pretty big so again I'm just gonna then tighten it out and that piece of banana will pretty much lock it in. Now if you're gonna use these smaller popsicle sticks uh, you know one of these isn't gonna be as much to lock it in. Now if you had really big pieces, uh, maybe things like walnuts or uh, pecans, things like that, you could get those in. Uh, but another option is to just stack several of the popsicle sticks. So here I've got five of them. And I can go ahead and slide those inside. And then you can see that space is a little bit more what we are accustomed to. Except now with five of them, that piece of cashew that I had earlier won't fit. But these little tiny pieces of dried papaya will fit just fine. Uh, and you can see the nice thing about this is these toys are the sort of senseless thing that you could do while watching TV. Uh, so again, you could make a wide variety of them. So this really is one of the easiest toys you will ever make. All right, guys, so as you can see, this is an incredibly easy toy to put together. It is incredibly cost effective because all of the items we get come in bulk naturally. They're pretty inexpensive and you can put together 10 to 12 toys for two to three dollars uh, and even less if you buy even more in bulk. So I definitely encourage you guys to try this out. Uh, now you'll notice that we made a couple of these toys during the video. Uh, and the finger traps did come in different colors. So here I have a purple, uh, a pink and orange, and a green and yellow. Uh, so one thing I might recommend to you guys, if you're going to use any type of dry food, so that's going to include nuts and seed, that's going to include dehydrated produce, that's going to include things like pellets, uh, you could put a different type of food in each of the different colors. So maybe the green and yellow ones, you would do pellets. The pink and orange ones, you would do dried fr fruit. Uh, and the purple ones, you could do nuts. That way, if you make a giant bin and just keep them in that storage container, you can pull them out and make sure that your bird is getting a little bit of variety. Uh, another thing you could do is you could put nuts and seeds in one. You could do dried fruit in another. And then the third one could have nothing. Uh, you could just have the popsicle sticks, the craft sticks, and the finger trap. If your bird gets used to it, they're going to expect there's some kind of food in there. So they might have a little more interest in this, tearing it apart, trying to find food that isn't even in there, um, which might seem a little bit mean to some people. But I do want to point out that in the wild, birds do have to work very, very hard to find their food. Uh, so even when we encourage foraging through different toys, that's still going to be far more food than they are used to consistently finding in the wild. There isn't a bowl out in the wild where someone puts food and it's not like every single stick they pick up or every leaf they move is going to have food under it. So having some that do not have any food inside them
can be a way to encourage your bird even further just because you are adding one more level of variety. Um, now, I love putting these together. They are very, very easy, but the important part, I think, for you guys is to see what it looks like when birds get them. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you guys some of my birds that are interacting with these because they do really enjoy them. I do want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. If you like this video, go ahead, click the thumbs up button. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because I try to put together a ton of videos, uh, at least one to two videos a week showing you guys different aspects of animal care to make your lives a little bit easier. Once again, I do want to thank you guys so much, and I hope to see you guys next time. All right, thanks. Bye. All right, guys, so here I have my Moluccan cockatoo, Tilden, uh, and then you can also see the umbrella cockatoo. That's Zeus coming up. Now, most people would think that large parrots like this wouldn't be able to get much use out of this toy because their beaks are so strong. And it actually works out well that you guys can see them here because they are currently in their night shelter. Uh, when I went to go film this video, some vultures had just flown overhead, meaning that the birds were unwilling to leave their night shelter. Uh, but that means you guys get to see the 2x4 perch that I use in the back of their night shelter. With four cockatoos in this enclosure, uh, I have to replace that 2x4 perch about every two to three weeks. It is certainly the perch that gets the most wear and tear. Um, if there's any kind of rain, if there's vultures, if there's any other kind of predator or anything scary, they go to hide in their night shelter. Uh, so they do spend quite a bit of time destroying that perch. Now you can see that one toy uh, was very, very exciting. Now all of these birds got their own, but obviously the toy that another bird has is gonna be far more interesting than the toy that you got. So in this one, you can see this toy has a little bit of that dried papaya in there, which is one of their favorite food items. And as you can see, Tilden is not willing to share with Zeus on this toy. Now you can see him pulling at that craft stick, but because of those pieces of papaya inside, he's not able to just pull the craft stick out, which would get everything to fall out, which means he's gonna have to work on all of the individual little sections where pieces of papaya or other pieces of food are hidden. Now, if you guys are interested in making this toy for your own birds, in the description section, I will include links for where you can get uh, the finger traps, the craft sticks. They're pretty easy to find, um, but they will be in the description section of this video in case you're unable to find them. say thank you to my Patreon patrons for helping to make these videos possible. You can find out more by visiting High Red Bird on Patreon or clicking the link in the description section down below if you would like more information. Thanks! Mm -hmm.